you had this dumb bit or <laughs> unintelligent bit. Okay. Where you would constantly try to convince me that you had the latest iPhone before it ever came out. <laughs> and I do. I have the iPhone 15 right now, man. That's Roosevelt Colvin, and this is On the Bench with Mike Call. That's me. A warning here, this episode was by far the most off-the-wall podcast we've ever done. It totally goes off the rails at the very end, which you'll hear when you get there, and I wouldn't want it any other way, because that's the type of fun that Rosie brings. Rosie Colvin was a stud defensive standout for Purdue football in the late 90s. The Chicago Bears drafted him, and he played there for a few years before going to the Patriots with that Brady-Belichick pairing of fellas. Colvin won a couple Super Bowls, and not long after he was done playing football, he moved back to Indianapolis to run some UPS stores there, as well as his wife's excellent bakery called Sweeties. He also joined us at the Big Ten Network. I did shows with him for a few years, and it was such a joy he has a weird, silly energy that I couldn't help falling into the habit of giving him a hard time, which he returns in kind. Case in point, I normally start the podcast on a crisp, clear point that makes for an easy edit and a strong beginning. This one, oh boy, there's just um, no good place to cleanly start it. So here's how it organically began. Turn your mute off. I'm not on mute. <laughs> Put him back on. It's terrible, my call. <laughs> See, sometimes that happens if you take the headphones. You. Your, your lips are moving too fast for me to read them. Wait. <sighs> not like we're in studio and we're sitting next to each other. You're right. You're right. Yeah. So you said you're right. You're right. See, I said I read that. I was trying to say sometimes the way. Wait. Are, Wait. I'm not looking. Oh I'm not looking. God. What'd you say? I said, sometimes these setups work. If you take your headphones off, you uh, it doesn't work audio. I had a microphone they told me I was supposed to use. And every time I plugged it in, I couldn't hear anybody. So yeah, when, I that's stopped, what happened. when I stopped using the microphone, it worked fine. And it was like, okay, well, it's only a slightly different, you know. What, what is that? Does, can you hear me? I can hear you, but you can't hear me. Yeah, I can hear you now because, because, my, because the headphones are still plugged in. Oh, well. I guess this works fine then. I don't know why you're so insecure about wearing headphones though. You look great. Yeah, but you you don't have headphones, so if it's it's you know it's a yin and a yang thing. It's like if if we were in studio, which we're not in studio, uh, if we were in studio and you were in a collared shirt and I was in a suit and tie, that wouldn't look right. I see. I see what you're saying. Okay. Uh, should we dance? No. no. You ready to have fun? I'm I'm always ready to have fun. Is that real fruit behind you? Real fruit. There's nothing, there's just works, just folders. What are you talking about real fruit? What is that little bowl of stuff up there? That's not fruit. Oh, it's a basketball and football. So. Yeah. But I see the Mott's, and you're, you're dad now, so I see the, the Mott's, uh, I'm just looking at your, is this your office or are you at home? This is gourmet stuff. I, I got an office now. Oh, dude, man, you're moving up from a dressing room. You just you have just a dressing room. Only took me a decade and a half, and they gave me an office. Can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> okay. Right. Are you ready? I'm ready, man. Okay. What are, oh, what, first of all, what are we talking about? Nothing. Nothing topical. It'll oh, be okay. stories about your past. We'll goof off. I'm just trying to show that you have a fun personality. There's nothing. Okay. I'm not having you break down any tape or anything like that. It's right because just... I haven't watched. I haven't watched any. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna drink water. I'm gonna drink water as well. Wait. You can, you can. Um, I kind of want to keep this in as the beginning and not do my actual beginning because this shows people what you're really like. What was your actual beginning? My actual beginning was going to be keeping in mind we only have a half hour. How much do you miss me? Uh, I mean, I think we're okay with the half hour. I don't think I don't think, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think we're gonna run out of time on that topic. <laughs> How many years did you work here? Man, I don't know. It maybe four. Was it four? It may have been four. Uh, sorry, my it felt like thirty. Up. No, it was not thirty. Because Working with you, it felt like thirty. 
it didn't feel like 30. It felt like um, 30 minutes because, you know, we always had fun, man. It was, it was a good time. Yeah, um, you, you had fun. I mostly just carried you every show. That's why it felt so long for me. You, it, it's obvious that you have not worked on being insensitive or <laughs> full of yourself because it was always, always about Mike Hall. But uh, I digress and move on. Would you like to know some of my favorite memories of working with you? Let's go. Let me hear it. What you had this dumb bit you kept doing all the time. Wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Before, before you, before you, dumb is a very strong word. And, and I would say if you're going to be truthful, then, you know, use terms and words that don't offend. So dumb offends me. So let's okay. go. You can, you can go with it now. To me, dumb is a compliment if I'm friends with you. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I only want to be around dumb people. Dumb is what's fun. <laughs> yeah, okay, I, I'll believe right. that, but go ahead. You had this dumb bit or <laughs> Thanks. unintelligent bit Okay. where you would constantly try to convince me that you had the latest iPhone before it ever came <laughs> out. <laughs> and I do. I have the iPhone 15 right now, man. Look here. Hey, look, the phone that I have... <laughs> I'm crying because I literally said Mike's not gonna believe me if I don't show him my new iPhone. So you don't do you, have it. You I don't do, have but it. No, you don't. You've never had the newest iPhone. You would say in September you have the iPhone that's coming out the next year, and you didn't have it. Hey, right now I'm communicating with you on a Mac computer that is uh, has the it has the next release of software. Okay, my cell phones are always a year ahead of time. All right, clearly that bit has run its course and gotten out of your system, so I'm proud yeah, of that. I, got, I have the iPhone 15. Here's, here's my other favorite thing you did. Okay. I forget what happened. Like, I had to lend you money. I had to, something <laughs> happened, and I had to give I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, I would come up. And I would, I would, I would, I would forget my wallet, which now that's not a problem because with the iPhone 15, <laughs> everything is in the phone. So I have my ID, <laughs> I have credit cards, you know, you can pay with your phone. Uh, at that time, there was no option and I would forget. And so you would lend me money because uh, I wouldn't have cash to pay the tolls on the way back. That's right. But one time, for some reason, you must have used every toll in America and you're like, I need like 50 bucks or a hundred bucks. <laughs> Or something like that. It was a good amount of money. And I was like, that's fine. And I, and I happened to have gone to the ATM earlier. Because again, this was like 10 years ago. And so I had uh, I had 100 bucks or whatever. And I gave it to you. And it was either the next week or the week after. You said, hey, Mike, I'm returning the money. And I was like, oh, that was quick. You didn't have to, but sure. And you gave me $101 bills. That's because, again, I own and operate businesses. And I have, those ca I have that cash. And I have to... You know, give change. Sometimes they need change in the drawers. So, I mean, yeah. It invested, was so uh, hopefully, hopefully, you invested it in Tesla stock because that would have that would have taken you 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 you'd be a millionaire by now. I I definitely should have. Instead, you know what I did? I went mm -hmm. home to my empty bed and I took a video of myself going. Di, 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 di. I did. I remember that. I do remember that. I do remember that. And I'm crying. Made, I'm crying. I made on my empty bed, and uh, that was. <laughs> <laughs> as good was, this as was this before you got married? This was probably, yeah. This yeah. Was, so I think you, I was so, dating my wife then. So you were, you were, um, you were literally um, <laughs> making it rain to <laughs> just yeah. to myself. Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right, let's try to get this on track. Um, if I'm not mistaken, you were born and raised in Indianapolis. Born and raised. Yep. Born and raised. What was that like, man? Uh, Indianapolis is a, I would say a low key city, you know, um, you know, I, I was fortunate to play in Chicago, uh, and in, in Boston or the Massachusetts area. Um, so totally separate when it comes to like traffic cool. Just real quick, we're like 10 seconds into my question and you're dropping that you are an NFL player. I, yeah, did, no, I, didn't say, I didn't ask about that. Okay. I never, I never say anything about playing. I just said, did I say playing? I said I was, yeah. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Indianapolis is a really clean city, man. Um, you know, profile wise, you know, there's spots and areas that you can get to and be in that, um, you know, that are pretty relaxed. Um, I've been very blessed, man, to you know, do well with my finances. So we were able to, you know, build a nice home and we live um, sort of on the outskirts, outskirts of, of, of Indy. 
But um, Indianapolis is great, man. Um, I, I've loved it. I've always wanted and yearned to get back home. When I was playing, I was trying to figure out when I could retire. Um, it was just too much money on the table, so I had to, you know, work through it a few more years, and then I uh, got to the point where I was able to make the decision. But um, man, I love being home. I, um, me and Tiffany, uh, still going strong, man. Having a great time. Almost empty nesters. Yeah, I uh, got one more, one more, uh, one more, more bun in the oven. Oh no, this me, bun's already out of the oven. Okay, uh, but, let, let me just real quick stop you again. I yeah. asked about growing up in Indy. And I'm you sorry, up, you're an NFL player. You brought up that your wife is there. You brought up that you built well, a house. Like, are well, you she, to anything she, I'm saying? Well, Tiff grew up here in Indy as well, so she's a part of my childhood. I wanted to date her in high school. I don't know if you wanted, wanted to know that, but I wanted sure. to date her in high school. Um, she didn't want to date me. We ended up dating later, and. The rest is history. Right. But she I'm just sorry. ran out of she ran out of options at one point. Uh no, no. She's you know, she's a pretty, pretty good looking young lady. And so she uh quit. She chose she me. Yeah. Decided there's no point in trying anymore. No, I'll just go no. with that guy. There you go. There you go. That's me. Did you do I remember you telling me you had a job at the RCA though? I did, yeah. Uh it was the Hoosier Dome uh when I first started working there. Um and uh I was the guy, I was the person that made for all the coach games. And big events. I was the person that made all the cotton candy in the entire dome uh, for years. So throughout my high school years, and then sometimes I would go back during college, but not not a whole lot. But uh, yeah, I was the I was the guy that made the cotton candy at the uh, Hoosier Dome. Then they switched it to the RCA Dome. Um, then when they blew it up and built the convention center, uh, my dad owned a company that was subcontract con contracted out to put the ceiling tiles in in the uh, convention center so i, I walked there all the time saying i mean i put those ceiling well hopefully they're, they're still the same ones but you know that was 20 years ago <laughs> right um okay so i i've heard i mean a lot of people have heard about how good you are at cotton candy man. i mean yeah. your legend has traveled across time across lands don't 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 do that mike don't do that yeah, no, don't, don't see that's that goes back to the whole dumb thing. You're you're trying to make me feel better, like to people's people's cotton candy reputation doesn't travel across time. Okay, so just talk to me like a normal. Talk to me like we worked together for four years, man. I'm not some dude that I'm not yeah. just not some random dude that you met off the street that you asked to do a Zoom meeting you know, like nine o'clock at night and he acknowledged it and said, okay, that's not me. I'm, I'm a guy that, that worked with you. So go ahead. What, what is the question again? My question was, I've never worked the cotton candy machine. I assume there's a technique and a skill there that is. you have. Yeah. See, yeah. Don't you make fun of me. I, I was setting you up to yeah. tell me something new about life. Okay. So, and, and not that you'll ever use this because uh, I don't know if you would really qualify. You, you don't qualify. I, I don't, I don't foresee your, your bags of cotton candy being, um, I use this word a lot, elite. Like I don't see you have, I don't see you being an elite cotton candy maker. And uh -huh. there is a, there is a specific way. You have to hold the stick a specific way. Once the candy begins to film inside the bowl, you have to whip it in and then come around and then get higher and higher and higher. And then you have sort of like a, well, depending on what kind of bag you're using, so you could get a you can get a a a cylinder right, which is a perfect a cylinder that's about twelve inches high. It's perfect, and then you drop it in the bag because you pull the bag, pull the bag, tie it, and you're off. Uh, or you can get the funnels, which those are inexperienced people. They pull them up too fast. Mm -hmm. uh, the candy is you know not very fluffy. But man, um, I was an elite. Cotton candy maker, elite. TJ Fleck would be proud. He likes that word too, elite. Elite. He likes elite. Oh, he says it. It's his favorite adjective. That that's the uh, that's the guy from Minnesota, right? The coach from Minnesota. That's yeah, yeah. I'm not interested in his elite. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you go to Purdue? Uh, man, it realistically it came down to Purdue, IU, and a small uh, small college here in Indy. Um, I hope that I hope that a lot of kids listen to this. I had I was recruited by man every school in the country. I got a box of letters, probably you know 100 pounds of just letters, and that that's how you got recruited back. But well, not recruited, but that's how coaches they would write you and send stuff in the mail. But, um, a lot more than they do nowadays. But um, I took my SAT score. <laughs> I'm not gonna. Well, I, I can say it because I'm I'm proud of it. Uh, I'm, pr I'm proud of who I am. 
um, I got a 780 on my SAT score, which was, which is what you got. Yeah, okay. You got the same thing. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> I got a 780, which was really bad. Um, I didn't take the SAT. I didn't even study for the SAT. And so I got a 780. Um, beneficial to me was that my, my in school or class, my GPA was really high. I was like a 3.7 GPA. Um, didn't take tests very well. So I was able to do bad on the SAT because I had such a high in-class scoring and uh, didn't go at that time what they call Prop 48. Um, and, but a lot of schools dropped off because of that SAT score. As soon as I, that SAT score was out, man, I stopped getting letters from everybody. Uh, like, I don't know if it was Lloyd Carr. I don't know if, I think, I don't know if Lloyd Carr was the coach of Michigan. Somebody was, a, I don't know if whoever the coach of Michigan was at that time. He, he stopped writing. Uh, Notre Dame, uh, Lou Holtz was there. He stopped writing. Um, but Purdue kept writing and, uh, um, uh, uh, Rick Smith, who was, you know, left Purdue, he was the scout there, went on to be the, uh, you know, be in Denver and the GM at, at the Houston Texans, et cetera. Long story short, uh, he worked me out after a basketball game, uh, uh a basketball practice at Broward Bowl in the high school and, um, man, offered me a scholarship. I never went on a visit to Purdue. I went on a visit to Wisconsin. I mean, not Purdue, but, uh, IU, uh, went on a visit to Wisconsin and I was so scared you know, that they were going to take the scholarship that they, they offered it to me. They were going to, they were like, man, this dude is terrible. I thought he was somebody different. <laughs> um, so I went on my official visit to Purdue and I, and I said, man, I'm taking it right away. I took it. And uh, the rest is history, man. Um, Purdue was, uh, was not, not you know, really my only, my only choice. I never felt like uh, I was tied to, to the Hoosiers. I had aunts and uncles that were engineers. My sister was going to IUPUI to be an engineer. So I was like, yeah, I'm gonna go to Purdue and go be an engineer. And, uh, got to Purdue and never was an engineer. Yeah. So <clears throat> there was never like a great Joe Tiller recruiting story. It was more just, you, you just no. like, that was a great school and they wanted it. Yeah, no. And you know, remember I had two years of Jim Coletto. My first two years was Jim Coletto's first two years. Coach Tiller didn't come in until my junior season. And so, um, I mean, I, I have, I have stories. They just aren't great. I mean, <laughs> it was, I mean, we had three days, um, couldn't change our tape on our ankles during in between practices. One juice, you can only get a juice. Like after practice, you get you could come in and get a beverage, and instead of get you know like a, a eight ounce can of of uh, ocean spray fruit punch is what we would get in between practices, and then we had to go back out there three days. Had to go three days. Oh. Um, yeah, it was it was rough those first two years at Purdue. That's brutal. Yeah, the great Mike Allstott was there my freshman year. You know, great dude. You know, outside of that man, wasn't a whole lot going on in Lafayette. What was Allstott like? Uh, good dude, but I was, you know, I was a freshman. You know, he was out there in the parking lot pushing Jeeps with, you know, other guys and, and doing crazy stuff. I'm like, dude, why are you pushing a Jeep right now? It's the offseason. But uh, it, it didn't, it did bolded him well. He went on to be probably the greatest fullback in NFL history. Um, but Mike's a great guy, my um, Purdue legend. Uh, but my, my time in uh, my freshman and sophomore year in West Lafayette were, we're tough rowing, man. It was it was frustrating, you know, not, not just for us as players, but for the staff and everyone that was connected to football. Yeah. Outside of the Hoosiers, which team was the most fun to beat when you were in college? To beat? Yeah. Uh, so are you asking just in general, like what was the best victory or or in general, like who we get to play every year? Like, <clears throat> like more of the every year. Like, was it fun to be like, oh, you're going to paint your locker room pink, Iowa? Uh -huh. Guess what? <laughs> we're going to beat you. <laughs> Um, so, so back at that time, I say back at the time, I'm, you know, um, we had, there was a rotating schedule. So Iowa, Penn state, we rotated Iowa, Penn state out with Michigan, Ohio state. And so I was on teams that we played. It was a game we played my freshman year. We played in Ann Arbor and it literally rained, sleeted and snowed in pregame. There was like a foot of ice and water on the field. So like we were asking for extra socks. They wouldn't give us extra socks. I'm like, dude, my toes are get ready to fall off. We, I think we lost the game six to three or six to nine. And then the next year we came back and played in West Lafayette. And they, they gave the ball to some big dude. He was like a big D tackle. He fumbled on the goal line. We won the game six to three or six to nine. Um, I, I sacked Scott Drysback 
in that game. Um, I had abs. That was the last time I had abs. So that was a that was a good one. Um, it was always good to play IU. I think I went three and one against IU. Um, you know, obviously the in-state rivalry, uh, but you know, Michigan State was always a good game. I, that turned out good for me because I had the, the infamous you know block kick, and that turned into the you know beating uh, Nick Saban. You know, all that stuff. People left the game, ran back into the game, stormed the field. You know, all that stuff is. I, I, you know, my my wishes for every college student that plays sports is to experience their fan base to storm the 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 field or the court or whatever they're playing. That that is an awesome experience. But you know, you know, with COVID going on, maybe everybody has to make sure they wear a mask. So, but outside of that, man, storming the field is something that I think is a is is something that college students athletes need to experience. How many times did were you on a field that got stormed? Were you saw the uh, fans? Man, Notre Dame, my my Notre Dame, my my junior year, they stormed the field. Michigan State, uh, I think that was my senior year. Uh, I stormed the field or stormed the court when the girls, when Stephanie White, Yukari, and uh, and uh, KD, they won the national championship. Um, uh, uh, that was, I mean, that was awesome. I, I still have that jacket and that headband that uh that I wore that night, but uh. Yeah, storming the field is 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 a is a mad rush of energy. I I remember talking with Stephanie White about that. I think it was Tennessee that they Tennessee. beat. Yep. And you were like maybe the leader that you yes. guys were like, we're doing it. And yes. everyone followed you. We're out. Yeah. And we watched, we actually watched from the rafters up in Mackey. And then man, we were like, man, if they win this, we are going. And we stormed, we jumped on top. I think we jumped on top of Yukari and some of the other girls. They were like, get off of us because you guys are, you know, 300 pound football players. Uh, but man, it was an awesome, it was an awesome time. Awesome time. Yeah. See, I've always said, like, I stormed the court, I rushed the field in college. I agree with you. It was an amazing memory. I also understand people are like, hey, it could be dangerous. <laughs> yeah. And that's a fair point, too. Yeah. But at least I'm not you. You're a <laughs> football player jumping on top of female basketball players. I mean, it could be really dangerous. Like, that, I mean, we understood those dynamics and we weren't going to obviously crush those girls. But, man, think about when they used to let people tear down goalposts. Right. Like, they're, 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 I think, man, was it Michigan State? I think they tore down the goalposts and took it and threw it in the Wabash uh, River. And I'm like, dude, how do you do that? Because there was like, I think they would say like, hey, there's, we're in danger of not being able to play the game next week because we don't have any goalposts because they tore them down. There was one game. I think it was my freshman year we played and we, it was Coach Coletto's, I think it was, yeah, it was my freshman year. We played IU in, in West Lafayette. They beat us and they stormed the field and there were IU fans trying to tear down the goalposts. And me and Chike O'Keefer literally were throwing people off the goalposts, IU fans, like, like almost getting in a fist fight uh, because they were trying to tear down our goalposts. I'm like, dude, it's not happening today, buddy. <coughs> How That's often that. did you go to sporting events as a Purdue student? Um, as a producer, the, I didn't go to a lot. The girls' basketball was probably one in one in few. Um, I think you know, the, at this day and age, like you know, I talked to Raven, she's up there, they're always going. Um, whenever I go back, they always try to introduce you know, a team, etc. I think that's really, really good. I try to incorporate that with my you know, my middle school sports kids, like the football team. I tell them, hey, let's go over and watch the soccer game, or, or let's go over here and, and, and catch the you know, the girls' volleyball, etc. Um, the, the biggest thing I, I, for, for me, there was never really a, a thought to go, but I think if there were more opportunities, it if it was more, more so presented to us, I would have gone to more, I think you know, as an athlete nowadays, you can get into those sporting events free. I don't know if that was the case back then, but, um, it was a grind back in the day, man. It, it, it was, you know, you, the, the student athlete of today has it a little different than the student athlete of 25 years ago. Man, imagine if you guys had NIO. And you could get sponsorship deals the way these guys. I mean, <laughs> I I remember doing. I remember doing. I would I would have had a deal with Kroger. I think it was Kroger, and I remember doing a billboard for because you know every school. I think every student you know has a student athlete from that sport or the major sports, either football and basketball, that does a billboard on like you know the major highways. And I remember being on the billboard for Purdue football. And I was at, um, I was in my uniform and I was holding up a bag. I was holding a plastic bag and a paper bag. 
And they're like, how do you want your quarterback sack? I would have, I would have free groceries. I mean, I, I literally would have eaten, I was in an apartment, so I had to pay for food. So at the, that would have been great for me for an NIL deal. I'm trying to work on, you know, some, some post graduate NIL deals as, you know, to try to see if I can get some, <laughs> some people to, to give me some contracts. It's not working, but we'll, we'll keep, we'll keep fending it. How, if I'm not mistaken, you've had a few pretty big name quarterbacks mm. in your career on your team. Yeah. Who would be the biggest ones? Uh, Got to start with the, t- uh, obviously Tom. <laughs> uh, he's a great quarterback, still playing. Uh, I've been fortunate to play some really good quarterbacks. Uh, obviously the next guy is Drew Brees, uh, Big Ten alum, Purdue guy. Um record holder right now i think tom has 68 yards before he passes both of them big 10 guys i mean that's that's crazy that's that's another you know connection um you know i, I was able to play with a guy named henry burris in chicago oh you don't know henry no. burris. <laughs> just, just right up along there one two three uh k mcnow my guy k jim miller <laughs> jim miller a, a, a former B, btn guy our buddy uh, yep. jim's my guy um, i was i was really just going after drew and tom oh, I'm sorry, no, okay. no disrespect to <laughs> Shane McNown, but Shane, uh, Shane, Shane from Florida. Shane Matthews. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think he quite belongs in the Tom Brady, Drew Brees, but um, But what about those guys? What do you want want to know about them? Well, I first want to know the level of surprise since you were with him for years that Tom Brady is not only a still playing, but that he somehow looks like he's 26 when he's 44. Yeah. Um, Tom, man, I'm, I was, I was a not I wasn't a believer going in, right? When I when I signed with New England, I was like, man, this dude, Tom Brady thinks he's you know all that. You see him on TV. <laughs> I get there and I see why. Man, that dude prepares like no other guy. Um, he's a competitor. You know, he he's a fighter, and what he um, what he was able to accomplish alongside of Bill, you know, them together. You know, Josh obviously, you know, helping them. Um, all the coordinators, you know, all the great players. He's he's been able to um, sort of resi- he's he's been he's been able to to show what greatness looks like for an extended period of time, and I think that is just um, unheard of. Obviously, um, he's he's continuing to do that. Uh, you know, he's obviously pro- promoting this this you know TB twelve pliability thing. I don't know if you're doing that. Nope. Um, it doesn't look like it because um, you know you're. Uh, it looks like you're in a large. Um, uh, polo versus a medium, <laughs> but you know, it, the pliability thing, I guess that is, is huge for him. He's not eating the Mott's applesauce that you're eating. He's, he says he eats a lot of, a lot of almonds is what he says he eats. So I don't know, you might want to switch that up and, uh, <laughs> and change that. As you see, my, my, uh, my polo is fitted. This is a large. And you've done the top button. That's I did sure. because that, again, I'm trying to look professional. You, you're just, I'm getting ready to go take this off anyway and get on air. You know, I, I know you, man. It's not like this is, we have a relationship yes. that dates back to your premarital status. <laughs> and so I know who you really are as a person. So, uh, but so anyway, why, back to- Why what? should I fake it by dressing nicely? Exactly, there you go, there you go. Don't, don't lie to me. Anyway, um, by the way, those two cups <laughs> that are on top of <laughs> that, that dress, take those down, go wash them, wash them out. And use them. Okay. Um, but Tom, man, the yeah. dude is, you know, he, he's, he's found the the fountain of youth when it comes to football. Um, yeah. And uh, he's, you know, football activity is keeping him young. I think, you know, collective bargaining agreement obviously helps in that situation, protecting the quarterbacks, not taking those hits, et cetera. Did, did you think back in college, Drew Brees could go down as one of the best that ever played in the NFL? I mean, there's no way you thought he'd be that good. Did I, I didn't think just because I was just in a different, I would say a different thought process. You know, Drew was the, Drew came in to replace Billy Dickin, great Billy Dickin, my guy, B, Billy D. Uh, uh, but Drew came in, you know, that that next year to be the quarterback of that offense. And we really didn't pay a t- whole lot of attention to, you know, what they were doing other than, um, you know, hey man, don't throw any interceptions, uh, you know, but, that that drive, you know, that drive, that Alamo Bowl drive when, when we played, you know, um, Kansas State, you know, I really wasn't even paying attention. I was in so much pain. I was, you know, I dislocated my shoulder and all that stuff. I'm like, man, 
you know, I, 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 there's nothing I can really do about it. I think had I had been healthy and I could stand up and really watch what was going on, you know, and see, you know, what he was out there doing, I'd probably be more appreciative of it. But uh, over the course of his career, man, he just, he's been, you know, he's been that underdog kind of guy, you know, um, you know, man, he's too short, you know, not, not a big enough arm, but dude's just a winner. You know, he just goes out there and does what he needs to do to, to help his team win. That was, that's, that's been big for him. Give me a Belichick impression. <laughs> a Belichick impression? Yeah, I talked there. Yeah, give me a Belichick impression. <laughs> Man, so did you see? Did you see the? Uh, <sighs> did you see him respond to the question the other day when they asked? They said, "Hey, Bill, what? Uh, what did you see? What did you see on those two Mac Jones interceptions?" And he stood. And he literally, he literally, you know, stood there for like thirty seconds. And was like, <laughs> uh, I probably saw what you saw. <laughs> Man, Bill's a savage, man. So, uh, Bill, Bill, I mean. What people get from the media and what they see is not really, not really Bill. I mean, he, I think I've told you this before, man. If you had a conversation with him, Mike, you would, it would be one of the greatest conversations you ever had. Have you ever interviewed him? Really? And you, it would, you would, you would be like, man, that was a really, really good interview. He is a really good uh, person. He loves football, loves talking football. Um, he just, you know, his focus is to deflect and to try to give his players as much. Uh, room for errors as, as possible so that they can, you know, be the best on the field. I'll buy that. I'll buy that. Yeah. Um, when did you first realize your daughter, Raven, is a much, much better athlete than you? I've, I've never realized that. But at the end of the day, if you want to ask the question, when did I realize she was a good volleyball player? Yes, maybe uh, that's what I meant. We, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get your... Dude, you got you got to be prepared, man. I don't think you have like one of those ear things in, but you know <laughs> nobody's coaching you right now. You got to have your notes. But um, uh, we Raven was a track runner for years, and we were on the track circuit. Her seventh her seventh grade year, she ran in middle school and didn't lose but one race, and that was against seventh and eighth graders. So I was like, man, we're going. We you know we Purdue track and field, you know LSU and all these. But she. Caught, she came home one day in seventh grade. I was like, you know, Dad, I want to, I want to go out for the volleyball team. I'm like, why? You're wasting your time. Um, we, we, we are, we are halfway to a scholarship right now. Uh, you're going to the Junior Olympics. You're, you're placing fourth at the Junior Olympics with your, you know, four by four relay. Why are you worried about volleyball? So it was a social thing. Kind of worked out where she made the team. I mean, literally, I go back and look at the tapes, and she's horrible. I mean, can't even jump off the floor. Eighth grade year, she she says, I don't want to run track anymore. I'm like, this is not what I'm looking for, you know, from, you know, a student athlete's perspective. I'm trying to get college education paid for. You're trying to pay for college. You want to go, you want to go hang out with your friends, right? You want to be Mike Hall. So at the end of the day, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, she says she doesn't want to play, she doesn't want to run track that year, and she wants to focus on volleyball. And a guy named Travis Fuller that used to be on the Purdue coaching staff started a, a, a volleyball academy here in Indianapolis called the Academy Volleyball. Um, and Raven went out going into, uh, after her eighth grade year, and they tested her vertical, and she had the highest vertical in the grade. And I was like, okay. So then – he said, we want to put her on the ones. And at that time, I didn't know what the ones meant. I'm like, okay, um, what are the ones? He was like, well, compared to last year, she was on the 12. So I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so she's, <laughs> she's on the first team. <laughs> so um, so she uh, she got bumped up to the ones. She They kept three middles. Very, you know, crazy. It's very similar to what she is right now at Purdue. She was, you know, they had three middles on that team. They, she rotated in. Sometimes she played. Sometimes she didn't play. And um, she kind of worked her way into it. By the time, you know, we made the decision of where she was going to high school and her freshman year, um, Travis, you know, had gotten her, you know, convinced us to take her to Purdue volleyball camps, et cetera. And, you know, I was fairly new to it. The crazy thing is the athletic director at Heritage Christian was a former old Miss volleyball player. And she said, man, you, you know, Raven's got a really, really bright future. And yeah. so uh, we took it and ran with it, tried to give her some training and, you know, she's grown and developed and she's a very passionate young lady. She tries to do, um, she tries to prepare herself. Ultimately, she's a really smart girl. So you know, she's, the you know, she's, she's big on her education, but you know, athletically she's, 
uh, really intense, a real high competitor, and she's uh, she's enjoying her time up there in Lafayette. Well, it's pretty cool. There's finally going to be a Colvin that Purdue fans can be proud of. Stop I, it! I think that's really great. That I think I think you have to acknowledge you have to acknowledge uh, what we're what we're on the brink of doing at Purdue University, Michael. Well, your daughter, not you. You've done nothing. Your daughter I, is pretty special. And I've already I've already my legacy is already done. She's creating hers right now, and then we got another another baby boiler coming through, man. We. Your, I mean, your, wife the first... has, your wife has talented genes she passed down to your kids. We all agree to that. I, I, again, okay, man, time to go. You, so, uh, wait a minute. No, 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 no. Dude, you got, you, 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 this is, you continually do this, man. Even when we were in studio, you got to stop insulting people, man. You got to stop doing that. That's not funny. Come on, man. What was the next question you had? Go ahead. Only my friends. Only my friends. Okay, uh, we're running out of time. Because but you know what? You, you used to do that too. You used to say that only to my friends. I can only imagine what you say to your enemies. Let's move on. I don't talk to them because I'm scared of them. They yeah. frighten me. Dude, what? Keep your enemies closer. Uh, oh, okay. I got to I get, get, get you my book of uh, advice. I would love to read the rest. And my book of acronyms, if, you're not, if you don't remember. An acronym book? Dude, I had a whole, I had a whole segment on the show of oh. all these acronyms. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You made up some very good acronyms. Very, very. S good. STW. You remember what that meant? Yes. Was Steal the water. No. Shoes that work. Come on, man. Let's move on. What's the last question? Let's okay. Go. So we wrap up the podcast by doing before you go four questions unrelated to okay. anything at all. all right. Number one, what is the best part about owning slash working in a cupcake shop? And I know it's not just cupcakes. I just like referring to sweeties. As yeah, a as a cupcake show. Um, I get to sample any and everything at all hours of the day. Um, and I have free access to unlimited amount of chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> uh, by the way, if you go on the sweeties website, the stuff your wife makes is insane. Like, yeah. the I thing, they're incredible. It's like a, a graduation theme with a hat and a diploma and it's a cake. Hey, man. She does her she, her and the, the 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 staff that she has man it's awesome. We've been very very blessed to have some really good people to work with. She man she took an off day today, but man she's she's really talented and the ladies that she has to work with are very very talented. Cool. So, you didn't need to say she took an off day today. That doesn't really matter to anything. But okay, yeah. I'm glad you added that. Yeah. All right, number two. Mm -hmm. Um, behind you, there's a whole bunch of stuff. Stop I looking. Stop looking at my house, man. <laughs> I see a golf trophy. Okay. I see I an NFL golf. 50 thing. G give me the coolest thing back there behind you. Uh, I would say, man. I'm trying. Let me look at. Can I look and see? Look well, through you the You can also just turn around and look. I see an Alamo Bowl trophy. Yeah, that's the MVP from the Alamo Bowl. Uh, man, I I would say, realistically. There's a lot of junk over there, so don't pay attention to that stuff. So okay. can we put a I'll put my hand there? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a podcast anyway, so this is crushing. But regardless, uh, there, there's a, there's a, see that silver helmet there? I do. It's called the Ed Block Courage Award, and that was the, um, that was what I got after I broke my hip in New England. Um, they give that to the person that they vote, the team votes on, who they felt was sort of like your comeback player of the year for the team, and. Uh, that was that was uh, that was huge for me because I went uh, you know signed the biggest contract in Patriots history got hurt you know didn't know if I was ever going to play again and then was able to come back and play and got the chance to start in the Super Bowl that was that so that year was really really big for me. That's awesome and that's way better than the fake golf trophy you have behind you. Wait a minute, wait a minute. The golf trophy that I actually have another one over there you can't see it but that that's is awesome. from uh, no that's what, that's the third place the other one I the other one you can't see is uh, first place and it's from my good friend. Anthony Calhoun, AC. That he's a he's a he's a VIP uh, um, sportscaster here. I don't know if you know any <laughs> VIP sportscasters, but I have friends. You can't see that one, and, and but whatever, sure, I'm sure it's there. Okay, let's move on to the third. Are, question. Wait a minute, are you saying are you saying that you think I'm lying? No. I don't have a first place trophy. No, no. Let's just move on. We'll move on. Third question, Roosevelt Colvin, whose autographs do you have? Ooh, that's good. I have. Every guy that played defensive end at Purdue in the den of defensive ends in my basement. Uh, I have Drew Brees. I have Tom Brady. I have Matt Light. I have Junior Seau, the late Green Junior Seau. I have um, Keena Turner. 
How'd you not get Tina, Tina Turner? No, not, not Tina Turner. Kina Turner. <laughs> oh my God, Mike Hall. Uh, <laughs> Kina Turner. Like Tina Turner. That would have uh, been I awesome. Have, I don't have Tina Turner's autograph. Um, <sighs> who else do I have? Um, is it weird going up to Brady and Breeze and saying, can I have an autograph? I when didn't do that. I, I, I didn't go up to them. I mean, I'm friends with these dudes. I got their phone number in my That's iPhone. Said, then why would you get their autograph? Because I, I needed them to sign a jersey. It's, it's, it's written specifically to me. I mean, if so you look at the walls of your... Who is that back there? Is that Coach, Denard, Coach Denardo on, on that picture back there? Who's no, that? that's me. That's a picture of me. Who's it? Who's knocking on your door? Okay, this is real. That's Dave Wanset. We're in the middle of a podcast, Wani. That's Rosie Colvin. Coach Wani, how you doing, sir? How you doing? What are we talking about? <laughs> we're just wrapping um, I mean, up. Right now, we're talking about autographs. We're talking about autographs. Yeah, we can talk about anything. You need, what, what, you need an opinion on something? <laughs> No, no, I just no. can't be doing well, a Bears how about, radio show. You don't how, about, know what how about an opinion on those Bears, Coach? Yeah, you know what? I'm I'm talked out on the Bears. <laughs> okay, maybe we'll do. Can we do you next week, Coach? Uh, I, we'll, we'll we'll schedule. I get here. I'm, I'm here by eight thirty. Okay, okay. Let me let me wrap up this podcast. Just to be clear, there's a sign on the door that says, "Please don't come in." I'm right, and wa- and Wadi and Wadi comes in. They want to care less. Yeah, great job. Um, Okay, autographs you got. You begged Tom Brady to get one and Drew Brees. I got, we covered that. Okay, last one. Um, someone comes up to you in your face and says, per don't, what do you do? Purdue. Or you just correct them? You don't? Yeah, there's no reason. Add to, at them? The, the, you, you cannot, you can't argue with ignorance. <laughs> so a person that would think that the spelling of P-U-R-D-U-E says per don't just means that they are blatantly ignoring the magnitude of what Purdue means to society. Uh, so let me just say, this was a delight. It was by far the most off the rails podcast we've done. And I couldn't be any happier for it, Roosevelt. No problem, man. Uh, you can send the check. I'll give you my address once we, once we clear. Um, uh, t- tell all my friends there that I said hello. Yeah. Um, but- I'm not for sure. I think I might have left a tie Okay. About four or five years ago. If you could grab that. I will look. Put that in the mail along with any other free items. Because if, if things are free, I always take three of them. I, I can give you that old Big Ten Network mutt. That'll be a good free one for you. If not, if it's not clean. It won't be clean. Okay. Well, Maybe I'll give you my autograph. I don't need that. I'll pass on that. Thanks, buddy. That's my guy, Rosie Colvin. And a fun treat, Dave Wanstead, too. Again, despite a sign clearly marked on my door saying, please do not enter, podcast taping happening now. Ain't no one he got time for that. So now I guess we got to book him for next week. It's already on the record. My thanks to Roosevelt Colvin for doing that. And thanks to you for listening. For the Big Ten Network in Chicago, I'm Mike Hall.